Well, the idea that the sun might actually go around the earth rather than the earth going around the sun is not at all stupid. In fact, the theoretical predictions uh, around the time when Copernicus was working on his new theory uh, of that old model fit the observations actually pretty well. And Copernicus's model, where he put the sun at the center of the solar system and all the planets moving in circular orbits around it, when he tried to calculate where the positions of the planets ought to be on the sky, he actually got a hopeless fit with the observations. It was only when Kepler came along in the next century and decided that the orbits of the planets had to be elliptical and not circular that uh, we actually got a, a model or a theory that fit the observations. I'm a cosmologist. I want to study the universe on very large scales to understand how the universe got the way it is we're observing it today. Uh, how the galaxies and clusters of galaxies that we see got that way, where they came from. And in order to understand where they came from, you need to understand the physics of the very early universe. And in the very early universe, we're dealing with very high densities, very high temperatures. And um, at those energies and uh, temperatures, the theories that we need involve high energy particle physics. The idea of the accelerator is essentially, it's like a big, incredibly powerful microscope. And it's looking into the constituents of the particles inside the nucleus of the atom. Well, high energy particle physics today is sort of the natural continuation of the historical idea that we should look inside of objects to see what they're made of. So that um, we build microscopes to peer inside of objects and then we um, discover that they're made of atoms and we, then we discover the atom is made of a nucleus with electrons going around and then we can discover what the nucleus is made of by for example smashing things into the nucleus and breaking it up now the nucleus is made of particles like the protons and neutrons and these particles are the objects which are used if you like in um, accelerators like the ones at CERN um, and these particles are smashed into each other to see what they are made of. And yet there's a problem with this picture of the origin of the universe. It doesn't account for gravity. Every time the physicists try to build this most fundamental force into their equations, what do they get? Infinity. We don't know whether these infinities that arise in physics are a fundamental flaw in physics, or if that's just the way nature works. Some physicists feel that any theory that has infinity in it has to be sick and is not a complete theory. Usually in physics, when you're doing mathematical calculations, the sorts of infinities that we're talking about occur as singularities. And a singularity in mathematics is when you take an expression and you end up dividing that expression by zero. And you know that if you divide a number, like one or two by zero, the answer is not well defined. You can't, you try it on your calculator, you'll get a, an error. Now to a physicist, a singularity is about the worst thing that can happen. When a physicist finds a singularity in a calculation, they pull out their hair and scream and jump up and down and kick the dog. Some people are very upset that the laws of physics as we understand them predict a singularity at the instant of the Big Bang. <laughs> 